Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week 40, another seven curious interesting things I saw last week, so as ever, let's crack on. First one is the Tesla robot, of course it is. Uh, this was unveiled at the Tesla AI day, or at least it was two days. This is their big event for sort of techie stuff. Um, and what you're seeing here is actually what they're aiming for. This is the Optimus robot, but what they brought out on stage originally uh, was the prototype, sort of off the shelf parts as they called it. So uh, again, as you can see here, uh, it is aimed to be in the workplace, whether that's a factory or an office or something like that. And it uses the same type of navigation system as used in Tesla's, uh, obviously a very different version of it, as articulated fingers, uh, all the good things. Um, now, obviously, if you've been keeping up with your robot news, then uh, a tethered walking articulated robot that looks a bit like this is nothing new. You probably get these 10 years ago. Uh, and if you've seen sort of Boston Dynamics um, robot that can jump and somersault, this is a long way off. This is a pre-programmed uh, maneuver it's doing, for instance, and it's tethered because all the power is coming through somewhere else. So there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, Elon Musk says this is a couple of months away from getting this thing walking. Uh, so there you go. Um, never really write Elon Musk off, but then, then again, if you looked at his uh, Cybertruck uh, predictions, then also don't believe any of the estimates of uh, timings. Um, this is due to be under $20,000 as well. So uh, if you're in the market for a robot, uh, this might be for you. Um, Dali, uh, or Dali 2, is now available for you to play with. So uh, if you haven't uh, been following the news, uh, what is Dali? It is a, a generative algorithm that if you type stuff in, it can understand uh, the context and the meaning of what you typed in and generate images as well. So uh, previously it was uh, really available only to a select few or researchers, uh, or there's a huge waiting list for it. Now it is pretty much open. So I've signed up for it and I've had a play with it. It is quite interesting. So uh, what can you do with it? So you can kind of do three main things is one is you can just type in stuff so uh, a fight between 100 chicken sized horses and one horse sized chicken and it will just generate new versions of that um, you can even be specific a photo of and it will then change the the basic the visual of that as well you can also ask it to do variations you can upload something I uploaded the logo to the dinosaur and you can as you can see it generated some quite cool variations who knows if you're a logo designer those might be useful um, and likewise what you can then do is background fill as well so you can upload an image that maybe has a, a, a cut-off background and it will try and figure out how to uh, rewrite the background that seems seems plausible. So you can do that right now. If you sign up, uh, it is free to sign up. Obviously, you do have to give your details to OpenAI, which uh, maybe, maybe uh, you might want to think about that. However, you get 50 credits, 50 goes at it straight away, and every month after that you get 15 credits to have another 15 goes as well. So um, definitely have a play. All I would say from this is it's really, really interesting how weird and inaccurate it is as well, and you have to get exactly the right prompt, and it takes maybe 10 goes to get anywhere near what you want, and even then it's not particularly brilliant either. So um, yeah, obviously this is going somewhere Dali 2 versus Dali 1, um, there's lots of stuff going on, but um, definitely have a play. It's very interesting. Uh, this is awesome. So NASA crashed a probe into an asteroid. So this is the DART um, probe. So this is the uh, Double Asteroid Redirection Test, which I think is a great acronym, DART. Um, and what you're actually seeing is footage from it. And this, what you're seeing right now, is of the impact of the asteroid and that little sort of dust cloud coming off it, or at least impact cloud. I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, so all of this is awesome. Why are they doing it? Well, they're doing it just in case there's a, um, a life-threatening uh, asteroid hurtling towards Earth. We now know we can launch an, uh, a probe and it can hit it. This is, uh, it took about a year to get there. Uh, I think it was launched last December. Uh, this is now October. So yeah, broadly speaking, 10 months or so. Um, 11 million kilometers away um, and um, what there are are two asteroids that are minding their own business uh, and this is I think called Did Diamorphus and it was rotating around Didymus um, so there you go that's the big one that it's not about to hit in the bottom left corner um, so there you go so that was really interesting and also the footage you're seeing right now is obviously from the main probe as it smashes into the asteroid but the next bit of footage this bit of footage you're about to see uh, is actually filmed from a drone that the probe uh, dropped just before it, it uh, hit the other one. So it's, it even deployed its own selfie cam, which I think is amazing. So well done, NASA. Well done, Dart team. That is spectacular. And uh, the world is just a little bit safer, and we need news like that right now. Talking about spectacular footage, uh, this is of the Chicago Cubs' um, stadium. So this is the Wrigley Park Stadium. And if you're going to do a promo video, uh, this is pretty much uh, as funky as you can get. So this is a live a drone shot, continuous drone shot. Um, it's actually a four-minute piece of video, and I implore you to go and have a look at it because the, the the drone flying in this the piloting in this is absolutely fantastic this is not even the best part of it it goes through 
uh, the scoreboard, it goes through the a visitor center, it flies down the corridors, it goes into the, you know, it is just amazing. So um, definitely have a, a look at it. So uh, well done to Sky Candy, who were the, the essentially the, the, the production company behind this and did the flying. Um, it is pretty exquisite. And also the technology behind um, allowing the, te uh, the basically the, 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 the communications network to be put all the way through this entire shot to allow the drone pilot to not only see it but also connect with the drone. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes here. It is amazing. Go and have a look at it, please. I uh, I implore you to do that. Um, electric passenger planes are now a thing. So this is the first ever test of the Alice prototype uh, from a company called Eviation. So this can carry six passengers at the moment plus three crew. So I assume two pilots and a flight attendant. Um, it flew for eight minutes doing a shakedown test. It is 100% electric uh, and it flew to 3,500 feet. Uh, it can do 250 miles in range and I think it does about 250 nautical miles an hour or whatever that is, knots, I guess. Um, so uh, it's pretty quick, uh, but it's a short hop, so it's either a passenger or a cargo version of it. So uh, that's pretty funky. Now, the reason this is really interesting is obviously uh, if you're looking at air travel right now, it's polluting and it is noisy. And uh, as air travel or at least airports are expanding, then uh, anybody living in the flight paths of these is now causing a huge amount of issues with um, you know, basically more and more noise coming from airports. So this might solve both of those things in that it could be solar and it can be recharged for free, environmentally friendly, uh, zero emissions and all that sort of good stuff so uh, there you go well done um, Stadia unfortunately um, everything's good news so far until we come to this slide so Google Stadia is being shuttered so if you don't know what Google Stadia is it is cloud gaming it was the one of the pioneers of the cloud gaming movement and um, what is cloud gaming uh, normally if you play a game you have some hardware you have an input device and you have a monitor and you play the game uh, usually speaking the better the hardware you've got the better the game looks um, however cloud gaming does away with that and what it does is uh, does all the rendering in the cloud and all you watch is a video back. So you have a controller, you do up, down, left or right. And as long as you can send those commands to the server, the server renders the amazing game and just sends you the video back. Now it can do that so quickly that you can actually feel like you're playing the real game even though you're doing it all through the cloud with no hardware particularly on your end. Um, now, why did it fail? Why are they shuttering it? Well, basically, it just the, the, it was just really complicated. Their their financial model. Uh, you had to uh, basically sign up. You had to then uh, have a monthly subscription. You had to buy the game for full as well. And the, not many developers wanted to actually put the, the time in to do this. Now. Um, uh, Amazon and Microsoft already have a version of this and they are keeping theirs going. It's much their, their version is much easier. So I think it just became complicated. They didn't actually make enough money and also the lagginess of it um, just because of the internet connection didn't always um, live up to the promise. So unfortunately uh, Stadia, one of the pioneers of cloud gaming uh, is actually being shuttered. So there you go. Um, and finally, uh, some other good news. Um, a corporate person, a corporate company has made a decent TikTok. <laughs> so I thought it was worth actually uh, actually featuring. Uh, it's usually just Oreos really that <laughs> does this. Um, however, Tesco's have done a TikTok so uh, I hope they follow through on this. Their idea is that uh, you would then audition uh, for your chance to be the voice of the checkout. So that's the stuff like unexpected item in the package or please tap your card now or those sorts of things. So uh, you would do this uh, interview and it's just caused a load of hilarity. I think Aldi have even replied to it as well so it's causing uh, the viral effect as we call it. Um, so yeah, nine point 3 million views as of today, um, as of yesterday in fact, so it's probably 10 million now. So well done Tesco's, that's a really good example of how to get engagement through TikTok if you are a big brand. Well done. Um, hopefully that was interesting, hopefully it was useful. Give it a like, uh, share it with somebody, it always really does help and if not I will see you next week.